Dude, horrible weather. Look at the size of these raindrops. So it still needs a couple days of curing before it's fully hardened, but it's able to be handled and we can install it on the car. We just gotta clean up the inside of the ports. It's still got some fluid in it. By the looks of it, which I didn't know, but I'll clean that up. Now that it's all consistently the same color, like it looks pretty good. It actually kind of emphasizes the quality of the welds almost more. And then the other thing that was to make note of was uh, Cam made the FRS with the eight into one. He was saying he should have done this because everyone's fingerprints stick on the stainless, whereas with this, it's not going to. So the benefits of this are really gonna show on this build. Whew. I didn't know Jack was gonna have the camera at the door. No, he did it all. It's in the truck. Get it, man. It's just been dumping water and then stopping and then Literally. dumping it. It's crazy how light this stuff is. Wild. Well, I think we have to spread it wider and stay high yeah so i guess try and pull it apart so far not good. so we're taking the valve covers off because the flanges of the headers they kind of they hit the valve covers and the frame rails at the same time so we're thinking if we if we lower the headers down from the top instead of sliding it from the for from from the forward then we'll have a better chance at getting the header on so that's why we're taking the valve cover off Playing up for three. definitely can't angle it like that either i think the engine's got to be lifted yeah and then slid on and then the engine can be lowered yeah. so we can put it back under the that's good, Kyle. Okay, we're there. That's got it. We're gonna throw one in the back first, probably. Yeah, dude, this is looks wild. Man. Crazy. Uh oh. Here's the moment of truth. <laughs> Not good. I mean, yeah, no, not good. Yours looks good. Oh boy. It's not fitting. Oh, it's hitting, oh, it's hitting the header. Did you just get the air hammer and just air <laughs> I'm serious, man. Does not want to air hammer his headers. Yeah, we got to tighten them on because it's only going to get worse as we tighten it. It'll get worse or better. It'll rotate it or it won't. I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm um, 3D scanning the engine compartment. Reason being is because this alternator with this setup doesn't fit in a very comfortable spot where it's got good heat management. So I'm scanning the alternator and scanning the engine bay. I also have to make engine plates that are gonna avoid all of the exhaust. So I got a bunch of designing to do today so that we can blast it out on the water jet, get Dylan on machining the stuff so that we can mount the engine, get that side of it done because that's the stuff that takes the longest to do. Everything else like fuel lines and water lines and oil lines, they can be done by not me. Um, this is the stuff that I have to do. So that's what I'm focusing on right now. That's it, that's all I got. Expansion tank, overflow, gotta mount this on there. Dilly. Great job, Dilly. There are new fuel rail supports. The most common thing that causes fires is uh, these 
fuel rails lifting and then the o-rings not sealing and then fuel spraying everywhere so dilly made this beautiful double shear super solid mount that's going to hold these fuel rails Does down and in their spot no chance of the brackets bending or anything like that you be careful with those o-rings dilly i know i know split. they should be vastly so enough a, actually so it's a beautiful thing we just have to transfer drill some holes through them. It's going good though. I I mean I did it in two hours. Yeah, engine plates, alternator mounts, we even got even fit an FDF logo in there. Beautiful. What more could you ask for? No, you can't ask for any more than that. The valve covers to fit. I could ask for the valve covers to fit. That would have been this is one of those things where we were waiting on the Frankenstein heads for so long. We only got them like a week and a half ago. If we had waited to build the exhaust until we got the heads, we'd be in real bad shape. I hate to show you this, but this valve cover fits fine. Okay, good. This one, dun dun dun. So it did before, but it must have, uh, when you're welding the flange to the runners, stuff, stuff moves. So luckily we're repowder coating these a different color. So we're gonna notch we're gonna grind some of this. These are really thick. It's very thick. And uh, they, there's some room to grind down these cutouts. It, it's not gonna take much. We'll, we'll get the valve covers to fit, powder coat them this anodized green so that everything matches. We're moving, We're definitely moving. I mean, for building the headers around an engine that didn't have the valve covers, I think we did pretty good. No complaints. No complaints. This is what makes working on suspension annoying. Whenever you're doing something on this side, it means you can't move anything on that side. But it's also sick because we can do a ton of adjustments on this bar. It acts as a strut bar for the chassis. And then at the same time, because of this cutout, this blade is spring steel and it has quite a bit of flex in it. So if I increase the spacing at this point, it means it'll twist the blade more and it'll reduce or increase the stiffness of the bar depending on the size of this spacer. So we can do a lot with this setup and I'm excited to play with it because it's on top of the car so all of the adjustments can be made from the just opening the hatch and working on it in here. So that's cool. Let's go check out this new wing that we got. It's nice out. It's beautiful. We're in that weird point where for two to three weeks weather is the best you could ever ask for and then it becomes too hot. But a couple days ago it was too cold. Anyways, we have the Atmosphere Demolisher. Destroyer, I, every time I say it, but either way, it destroys the atmosphere. And it is a wing from BCL, Big Country Labs. Been following these guys, been growing basically side by side with them, doing completely different things, but they're a slightly older company than me, but I saw them on the uprise on their social media accounts, kind of at the same time that mine was going up, and I've just been watching and enjoying from a distance, seeing how well they're doing. For the Corvette, we went with the Honeycomb Carbon. This wing is both light and extremely aggressive. Although there's not metrics for the downforce, we do plan on actually getting some. The wing is super aggressive. There's only one thing that it's going to do and it's going to create a lot of downforce. It's going to bring a lot of attention to the build. And depending on where we put the uprights, which we are going to be making custom uprights for this car, it won't just be mounted to the trunk. That's going to determine where the downforce is applied. With a wing like this, if you put the uprights behind the rear axle, you're actually going to be putting pressure on the rear tire and taking pressure off of the front. The axle acts as a fulcrum we're probably gonna be making uprights that go on the rear axle or slightly in front so that the downforce is applied on the rear axle and towards the center of the chassis, pushing down on both front and rear. We don't wanna be lifting weight off of the front of the car. But without talking too much, let's take a look at this beauty. Let's get some sun. I should just run with it. <laughs> Should I run across the parking lot? 
So much downforce. Here, there we go. Look at this, ECL, right inlaid with the carbon. Looks great. Bouncing points are nice and strong. Uh, it comes with some pitch adjustable brackets that bolt here. I think we probably will incorporate those and use them, but we'll see. I got the larger end plates for the sides, but again, the side plates are something that we can also customize. Um, we're gonna take what BCL has done with this beautiful carbon, and then we're gonna put our own touches on it to match with the Corvette. I'm going to bring this over to the Corvette so that we can kind of just like eyeball up how crazy this thing's gonna look. Because the Corvette chassis is a very low car. The top roof of it is like 45 inches off the ground or something. So this wing will actually be like this high when the car is on the ground. So it's gonna be something like a really cool display piece. We gotta write something on the back. Probably something like we erase what we build or slogan that we've used in the past because uh, this wing is going to be a statement piece. Thank you so much BCL. We are going to do you guys good and show off this thing with a crazy build. Okay so with this wing the thought process is to design uprights that cut through the trunk but they actually are going to connect right to the chassis. And we're going to focus on making the mounting points for the uprights, either on the center of the axle or in front of that. And the reason for doing that is like I said, the axle acts as a fulcrum. If I stand on the back of this car, it's going to lift the front and it's gonna put a leveraged force on the rear axle. So we wanna keep down force on the front and the rear the uprights are going to be somewhere in this area, maybe even connected to the roll cage. We don't know yet, but that is what this is going to be like. I want to put it about roof height with the car, and this is going to look sick. It's probably going to be right about there. Right? It's got to stay off the wall. I'm going to put it on hydraulics so that it tilts as well. It's going to be linked directly to the steering so that when I turn, it's going to have a long cable banking the wing like this. The goal for this BCL wing is to be mounting it nice and high on the chassis and it's going to be linked with cables to the front suspension so when I turn it's going to bank. got to do a couple things here. We pulled the manifold so that we can clean out the EGT so that our probes fit. Hello. These need to go in there like that. The ceramic coating got in the holes so we got to drill them all out. I'm doing the motor plates so basically this is the weld on piece. This is the motor plate. I want the weld on piece on the back side of the motor plate so that when I put the engine in as soon as the engine hits the motor plate, I can lower it until the holes line up and that's exactly where it needs to go. There's no playing around with engine mounts and trying to align stuff. So I got to put this here like that, grab my little bolts, snug these babies in. I designed the motor plates to be exactly a quarter of an inch narrower than the frame rails on each side. So when I bolt both motor plates up, it's going to like self-center the engine based on the 3D scan that I did. The other interesting thing that I have to do, so I have one hole here on the motor plate that lines up with a, one of the head. So I need to make a spacer here. And then there used to be a hole there on the factory GM blocks, but the dart block doesn't have one. So I'm gonna actually have to drill and tap that hole. There is a casting for it to happen. so. I want to just grab these two to get enough structure on this side. But uh, basically, once I get this lined up, pretty much good to tack this in place and then do the same on the other side. Dylan is machining up the other engine plate because this head sticks out 39 thou past this face. So he's machining the uh, relief cut on the back side. So when we bolt it tight, it'll be square and flat to both faces. What I did was 3D scan this with the header so that I could see there's actually a runner that goes right here. And then this motor plate has to avoid 
this exhaust and avoid another runner here. So this, this side looks interesting. This side also is going to have the alternator facing backwards. I have this all in a scan file and on CAD that you can do. I'll, I'll send you a quick screen grab, Jack. But uh, yeah, we're making good headway. We're getting all the things checked off so that the car will be ready for just wiring and then running. Uh, today I'm going to a hydraulic store to get the power steering line to go from this fitting, Dash 8 AN, to a M14 1.5 banjo. This is the pressure. And then this is an M16 1.5 return line. So that's gonna go through my cooler my grassroots cooler, which is sitting on that rag right there. Uh, it's a dual pass cooler. We're going to have little Panasonic fans mounted on the back and then it's going to be stacked with the oil cooler. So the fluids are going to run through there. Those are going to be mounted up front and then back into the reservoir. So we get nice cool power steering fluid when we go to pressurize it again for the rack. Drift cars use a ton. The more fluid you can get in the system, the better because that's uh, more cooling power and it's more, it's less fluid to boil. It's obviously gonna take longer and stuff. So that big cooler is gonna give us a lot of reserve. And yeah, that's a little update for you. We've got our oil filter mounted and our power steering mounted on the rubber, which is really cool. 3D scanned this and then made this bracket that bolts right to the sway bar. The sway bar blades are actually done and connected. If you take a peek in there, all nicely tightened down, ready to go. We just gotta, you know, do a couple things there, but it bolts to the factory location. Everything's coming together super nicely before we send it off to Fab Mac Industries to get wiring finished up. My brother was supposed to do it, but he is very busy preparing for his first race May 7th on his electric cars. So he won't have time to do it. Yeah, just gonna keep grinding. What is that?